Okay, for my next virtual lab review, we're going to be looking at this ecology lab focusing on barnacle competition. Uh, Charles Darwin spent time researching barnacles, and he ended up hating them, but they helped him out in developing his theory of evolution by natural selection, so we might as well spend some time here too. So there are several different things here. There are three main sections in addition to the credits there at the bottom. Um, there is some background information on some really neat stuff. It's actually very well written um, and very clear background information talking about the ideas of a niche um, and how when you have multiple species, they're competing over one another, and that creates a little bit of a different environment. Um, it talks about tides, explains why tides result in high, low, and mid tides. Um, doesn't go into a ton of detail. It's not the main focus of the lab, but it does help there. And then it talks about the life cycle of barnacles. So it really does a good job of introducing things. So you would have that framework. I could see if I was using this lab, you know, having several questions for the students to answer on some type of worksheet that had this kind of stuff. So they were they were showing that they were going through this part so they understood the, the abiotic and biotic factors involved. Um, from here, they move. we move on and there's a tutorial. And this tutorial explains how the lab works um, I'm not going to do too much on this because I'll explain a little bit about the lab. But basically, we can manipulate a lot of different variables all listed here on the left. Um, we can manipulate the sea level, the tidal change, so how much the water goes up and down, uh, the starting presence of each of the different populations, um, as well as the density of a third population. And so we could also remove all of one of the species, which can be helpful to us too um, if we want to look at what happens in, in the absence of. Um, in the absence of competition. And so, again, it walks you sort of through this and points out what the different barnacles look like. Um, what I love is here to the left of the, the actual graphic, we see these normal distributions, or sorry, at least these distributions of the two different populations. And it points out that the, the little graph, the little graph has this little um, diamond and then this, which is the mean, as well as its um, standard deviation, which are terms that I know I go over in my class. And that's helpful to have. Um, it shows you where they are in terms of the level on the rock. Again, I think this is well put together. Okay, so let's actually run the experiment. So when we run the experiment, we see um, the model come in here on the right with the predatory snails down there below. Uh, we have the populations start to colonize, and then we see their distributions. And so um, we can change any of these variables on the left. And so if we were actually running through this lab, I'm sure with my students, um, we pick a variable and we manipulate that variable and see how it affects things. Um, and then over here, as you click on, you can actually see the data starting to generate itself. And so we have the two populations relatively equal in size, um, starting to show up in kind of two different locations on the rock. Uh, I will admit there's something I'm a little confused about and I still haven't figured out. Um, it says mean elevation on the rock here. Um, and it looks like the orange Belenus has a larger number than the white one, the Talamus, but it looks like the orange one has a lower elevation on the rock than the other. So there may be an air in the lab, um, but the material is, is good all the same. Um, that would have to be something maybe I could have my students figure out. Um, you can crank up the speed of the lab to give yourself a little bit more time to see any effects. So we'll crank it up to 12. So here we see it going a lot faster. And it looks like overall we see the white population, the Talamus, higher up than the other population, it's um, lower down in the in the water there, and so um, so again we're, we we can we can see the tides manipulate, we can see them affect the different populations. Um, once we go back here, we can actually do something to change one of these variables and see how that might affect things. Let's try removing the predators and see what that does. So if we remove the predators altogether, looks like we see start to see a lot more of the um, one population is starting to kind of work its way down the rock, which is good. So you can see that there's a biotic factor that's keeping them from colonizing too low, where the snails can't get up too high. We could limit the amount that the tide actually changes um, and see how that affects things. We could also change the sea level if we want to. And so we can make the sea level go higher and see if they colonize higher. We can bring the sea level down and see what happens to the population as they move down. So again, a lot of variables you can manipulate here, a lot that the students can do to experiment with different populations and um, different effects e ecologically. I like it. I like the way it's distributed. Um, there may be some errors in it, but this would be a great place with just a simple worksheet where students could play and learn about um, population dynamics. So I like it.